Hey guys, and in this video we are switching from our trusty Argentavis, who's been with us for the last 13 episodes, with an Ichthyosaurus. I didn't even bother to rename this guy. Um, we're also going to get some scuba gear, and then we're going to head under water, although you can of course use any water diner you want. But we're going to head underwater and we're going to go through all the water caves. Now this will not count the artifact caves underwater because there's two of them as well. But this will cover all of the non-artifact caves we find underwater. Which contains a lot of pearls, crystal and uh, oil. And also one note in each. Okay, so the first note, uh, we want to head down to roughly this location. It's a little bit tricky to see because of the mask, but I need to use it to see underwater properly. But you can see um, uh, where we are right now. So uh, basically, that's the obelisk. You want to head south of the obelisk, so the obelisk behind us right there. And if you go south of the obelisk, you should eventually come across this rock. You can see this is the surroundings, and this rock is kind of just sticking up almost to the surface and there is no other rock nearby that does that so it should be fairly easy to spot that so when you find this one that means that you're close then you just want to basically head south of that rock so use a compass or if you have the arrow on the map depending if you play on server and all that uh, you can see the big problem about being in the water is that the mask blocks it but uh, anyway uh, you want to head south anyway so Head south and you should see that big kind of rocky part there as well uh, with some oil nodes on top uh, and if you head down to the left of that so from the spike head to the left and you should see the bubbles now the big clue here when you search for water caves is to look for bubbles because that means that there is a cave and you should see these bubbles here so the big rock there is the smaller one next to it and on the left side of that there is bubbles coming up um, on the very deep surface. It is very close to the border as well. The border is right um, here. So it is pretty close to the end of the map as well. And uh, yeah, so you see the bubbles there and what you want to do then is just head in. And this is the cave, so go up to the surface. Looks like this. Uh, you will see a lot of these caves being practically the same, just with a little slightly different uh, twist to them so you want to go up um, this is what the cave looks like and you just search it and I mean it's not you don't really need me from here on out because finding the note is very easy but in this case it's right here you see all the resources you can also get while you're down here uh, Explorer note Helena note number four at 90.6 by 13 Okay, so for this next one, we're now moving west of the obelisk. So we're still very close to the first one. Uh, I just quickly want to note that I'm going <laughs> to... Note... Uh, yeah, well, anyways. Uh, uh, just quickly going to say that I'm moving around the entire map. So not necessarily to the closest one, but I'm just going to swim around the entire map, taking all the notes on the way. But at least that way you will know where the notes are and that you don't miss any caves on your way. So uh, I would definitely recommend if you're doing a note run to do what I'm doing. Just take a dolphin, something fast, spec most pointed to speed so you can run away from everything. And then just go across the entire map once. Go through the caves, collect all the pearls, and then also the notes, of course. So you won't have to do that later. And then later you can, of course, go to the caves that are easiest to access for you and get the pearls there and all that. But anyways, we are now here west of the obelisk. Um, you want to head down. And once again, there is actually there's these rock spikes that we're going to use to kind of guide us. We're not going to really pay attention to the right one. So when you come from the island, there's two. You want to pay attention to the deepest or the one on the left. Um, on the left here. So you want to just go to that. And if you look completely like left, so if you look westwards, basically, you can't really see it on the arrow, but that's towards the end of the map. If you just look left from that, so with the obelisk behind you, look to the left and there's a little rock down there and you should see the bubbles coming up from the side of that and it is the same thing as last time go under uh, go to the bubbles you should get to a little kind of entrance to a cave and then when you come into the cave um, which looks like this 
Uh, I just had to cut because I didn't find the note. Uh, that was my bad, but um, you will see eventually that a lot of the caves look basically the same I think they have three different models for the caves that they've used repeatedly uh, But when you go here, you want to basically um, Look into the cave you can see how there goes a corridor on either side goes around that big round rock thing You see some sort of spiky things in the ceiling some coming up from the ground and If you look behind the ones coming up from the ground the Dilophosaurus dossier is at uh, 84.3 by 10.2. Alright, the next one might be a little tricky to find, uh, but we're gonna start right here anyway. Uh, I guess, I, I, to be honest, starting maybe on land, just seeing what the land formation looks like is the best. So this is where we are. This like little cliff thing should be a marker maybe to start off with. So this is what the it looks like underwater, and you want to just head down. You can see there's a lot of very tall, like, seagrass or seaweed or whatever. And uh, it is quite simple. I mean, I, I'm not sure why I called it hard. It might just be easy to miss, because the big cave, I think, is right here somewhere. I was, I was supposed to show it, but I, I guess not. Oh, yeah, right here. Anyways, um, you basically want to go down from that rock. Um... And uh, you can see all the seaweed, so you can see there's a, uh, well, I mean, this is, the, you can't remove the seaweed, so you can use it as a marker. So you see the ones that are closest to the cliff, and then there are some that are further out in the water. You want to basically see that the ones closest to the cliff, you want to go to the end one, so the last one here. You can also see how it's kind of this U-shape on the actual, like, cliff leading up to the, to the surface, or to the island. And basically just head down next to that seaweed and you should see the bobbles coming up from this rock right here I'm not sure why my rocks underwater keeps loading in two seconds before I reach them but and if you haven't noticed the water is quite dangerous at least around the caves it looks like so be careful about mozos and stuff so obviously just do what you've always done go into the cave search it this one keeps the design of the first one pretty much Although it doesn't have that plateau. No, wait, this is the uh, third design. You can see there is a shelf there. So just walk around. You see those upward spikes, and the note is right here. It's the Titanomirma, with those annoying ass insects that keep attacking you whenever they get the chance. At 49.2 by 11. And the last cave design basically, you go up the back. And then you end up kind of on an elevated position from the en uh, entrance. Actually, very strategic if you use this as a base or something, because you can snipe them from here if someone tries to enter. Alright, we are moving once again quite far north for this next one. We're now up in the glaciers that we were at last video, actually. So, you want to go, basically, this one is very easy to find because you can use the glaciers as a starting point. So what we want to go, do is move to the, is it the second? No, it's the third glacier, like the big glaciers. That's the, you know, that's the big, uh, big one up in the corner. Then you have a number two or a number, if you start from the bottom, that's really bad, sorry. If you start from the bottom, then there's one big, two big, three big, four big. You can actually, the ones that are marked on the map, basically. You want to go to the third one from the south or the second one from the north. Uh, I usually call this the, I, I don't usually, I call this the penguin glacier because it always has a lot of penguins on it. Although it doesn't look like I can access close enough to see that well, but you can see there's a bunch of penguins. You basically want to start at this glacier, um, uh, or when you have this glacier above you. It's not called a glacier, is it? It's an iceberg. Uh, I'm bad with words, as you might have figured out by now. But we want to basically head down from that. Um, so have the glacier above us, and you can see that there is kind of this rock spike thing here on your uh, on your left if you go down from it, and then there is also this boulder, boulder, smaller rock on the right, uh, and on the small one you can see that there are bubbles coming up on the deep end. So towards the end of the map, or westwards if you will, there is a. Uh, bubbles coming up from this uh, smaller rock here. So it's right next to a spike under the penguin glacier. 
you will find bubbles. Um, I'm not showing the coordinates of the cave because if you see the coordinates of the note, you should be able to find the cave if you follow them. So yeah, you can see this one takes the design of that first cave with like a little shelf in the back and being smaller than the other ones. And the note is up here. It's the Allosaurus at 16.4 by 10.8. Next, you want to start roughly in this area. Um, roughly at the corner of the kind of island. That's the blue obelisk. I'll just show you the map location. Sort of got these smaller ice sheet pieces kind of falling out in the water. Uh, and if you go north of that, or down into the water if you will, this is what it looks like. So you have some big rocks on your left, a big one or sticking out there. But if you go down a little deeper, you should see this boulder here with a spike on top. Um, low rock, but it has a spike, which is a good indicator, and there's a spike in the back there as well. Uh, oh, sh oh no, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Anyways, I gotta be a little careful because there is an Alpha Tuso Toothus right there. But um, if you go behind the spike and look down, you should see the bubbles. And if you go down and look in, you should see the cave. Which might be a bit hard to access. Sometimes they are. Okay, no, it went fine. This is like uh, one of the other caves. You can see the shelf on the top there. And for this one, just go up. Again, I'm not, I don't know how important it is to show how to do it in the cave. I'm always going to do it, but like, it's right here. You should find them pretty easily. It's a trilobite at 10.9 by 22. Here uh, is where we're starting with this next one. This is where we are at the map. Um, it's basically at the end of that river with the waterfall there. If you watched my last or second to last video um, you should probably know that there's a note behind that one but anyways uh, you wanna basically yeah head down in the water this is what it looks like you have this big sort of formation here on your right going down um, you have like a huge formation there and if you follow that there's a little rock in front of it so you have this huge one, which shouldn't be hard to find. A little rock in front, or right next to it here, on the left side of it, if you will. And the bubbles comes out of it, so that means cave. And surely enough, there is a cave. And there's also Megalodon that I'll have to kill, because if not, it's going to kill my uh, dolphin. So I'll be right back. Okay, it is dead. Um, so let me park my dolphin and then this is one of those caves with a little shelf in the back although for some reason sand is glitching through this one and the note is on top of that shelf in the back there it is the carbonemus or turtle at 10.9 by 40.4 all right this next one is actually slightly trickier to see because it doesn't or the bubbles aren't that visible but we're starting at the Carno Island or in the very northeast of the map so we have moved quite far again from where we were last time at Carno Island right there um, you want to head down in the water and it should look like this uh, this big spike is kind of the easiest marker although we're not heading to that but if you see this big spike th then just head left of that from Carno Island head down all the way in the corner of the map and you should see this big rock here with some oil nodes on top uh, oh wait now they're visible when I was here searching for the note first time they weren't uh, okay well um, here's the big rock and yeah you can see the bubbles coming up from the side um, when I was here uh, finding the note before I recorded this session they were not visible so I'm not sure why they suddenly popped up but I'm not complaining and then this one is one of the you can see the cave design similar to the first one uh, and the note is here in the front it's Helena note number one 
um, at 8.4 by 90.8. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone watched episode 1, but if I did mention that, like, one note, Helena note number 1 could be at one side of the map, and Helena note number 2 could be on the other side of the map, and you will now see what I mean, because Helena note number 1 is here, right? While Helena note number 2, if I don't think we've taken it yet, no, but it is all the way down south, relatively close to the first notes we took in this video. So, like, that's a prime example of why you shouldn't take the notes in note order, but rather in geographic position. And we are not too far away, actually, but we're down here now. Basically, if you look geographically, it's sort of at the very bottom of the mountain, and then out from there to the ocean. Um... This is what the surroundings look like. Head down and you should see a more distinctive features that you want to sort of use to guide. You have this sort of rocky spike sticking out here on your left and this sort of pillar on your right. You just head between them and you should see another, you should see a bunch of smaller rocks and you should see that one of them has a spike right in front of us, roughly in between those. And you can see the bubbles coming up from underneath and of course that means cave. If I can get in. Here we go. And then if you go up... Oh, Jesus, what the hell is that? Is that an eel? That gotta be... What the... Oh, shh. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Uh, anyways. Um... Into the cave. Straight forward. And you should see the note out here in the open. It's the Titan Boa at 36 by 92. Current location off the swamp on the west side of the map. Uh, or east side, sorry. Uh, it's not very easy to show exactly where I am here, but you can see the green obelisk. And again, the swamp roughly in the middle of it. Sort of from north to south, I guess you could say. If you go down, there aren't too many distinctive features, although this, or, I mean, there are some, but you have two spikes, quite far apart, but this spike with an oil node, and that other spike with an oil node, and if you go in between them, uh, you can see all these uh, rocks underneath here, this one forming almost a little circle or square, and the front one, the one in the front here with an oil node on top, you can see the bubbles coming up, and there is a cave with a note if I can get up and the note is here next to those spiky things and it's the Rex so for all you Rex fanboys you might want to check this one out 53.1 by 92.5 we are here now at these coordinates uh, roughly around here, map check, if I can get the map up, there we go. Uh, down in the very southwestern corner, no, southeastern corner. And if you go down, you see a whale. I'm just kidding. But if you go all the way down, my terrain has not loaded in. There we go. You can see a very big spike. This is basically in the very corner of the map, if you couldn't tell. With an oil node, rock next to it with an oil node. And for some reason, my bubbles aren't quite showing, but you should see bubbles coming up from the front of that rock. Oh, there we go. There they are. Uh, you can see bubbles coming up. Again, the spike there in the back, rock in the front, and you see bubbles coming up from that. And of course, the cave is underneath or inside it. And I think the note... Oh, no, the note is right here. Uh, the Triceratops at 87.4 by 91.0. This next one, I'm sorry if you hear any cat sounds. My cat just jumped on my lap. And she wants cuddles. Um, we are right here now. Obelisk is there. Just a random beach. Um, not too much to work with, but if we go underwater, this is what it looks like. You have a big, big rock formation right here with an oil node on top. And then a smaller one here, and then sort of a pillar over there. And if you go down, 
um, to the very end of the map, sort of. There should be a sort of uh, rock with a pillar on top and then an oil node. You can see that is a repeated pattern among these caves. And then there is a, a bunch of bubbles coming up from uh, the bottom. And if we go down um, and into the cave and then ugh, get up here and then we gotta find the note. Oh, there it is. Helena note number two. There you see, like, Helena note number one was up there, Helena note number two is down here. 91.8 by 71.2. Okay, this is where we're starting for the last one. Uh, we are made it all the way... Do I have brightness? No, I don't. Um, all the way down <coughs> south, we're kind of close to the first two notes now. Um, red obelisk, that's the foot paw, if you remember that, for the very beginning of this series. Uh, head down, and this is a very f easy feature to remember because it is almost touching the surface. You can practically like place foundations and build a base out here. And then there is another one, but if you go basically down from that, uh, from that pillar, you see this sort of formation, sort of an archway type thing of rocks. Keep that to your left, and my kitty just left. And then you see this sort of pillar on your right. So go in between those. So from that, go in between those two formations here. And then um, my bubbles aren't really showing. Probably still rendering in. But you can see the bubbles there. A little bit at least. Um, underneath this rock. And just go underneath. And this is the final cave, by the way. And the note is right here. Helena note number three at 90.9 by 36.1. We've covered them all now, so uh, what we're going to do next is go through caves. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, uh, we have actually reached 11 subscribers while I record this video, which is on December 31st. So I'm really thankful for that. I was expecting to reach maybe five subscribers by the end of the year, but we reached more than double that so I cannot thank you guys enough for it uh, so I guess 20 subscribers next would be awesome if we could reach that although obviously not before New Year um, uh, but um, but uh, 20 <coughs> subscribers is the new goal and uh, also of course like comment and all that on the video if you found it helpful and um, this I recorded this on the 21st of December but I haven't even uploaded the last video, so I think this will be out January 1st, so I should wish you all a Merry Merry Christmas? No, Happy New Year as well. So, uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.